Hi friends, uh, we are here for this course on risk based engineering and uh, today's module is uh, prognostics and health manage, management and uh, in this module, this is third lecture and it is on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, I would say I will present the toolbox um, that means what are AI and ML and of course statistical techniques that are used in prognostics and health management. So we will be sort of, uh, it will be sort of a survey uh, and sort of introduction on uh, applicability or application of AI ML uh, for prognostics and health management. I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde and this is a course on uh, sponsored by uh, National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. So let us get on to the topic of uh, major AI and ML techniques uh, and as I said even the statistical techniques for. So um, first we will see what is the power of AI ML or how they are relevant uh, for this thing uh, and when we talk about AI ML um, there is a machine learning as well as there is a statistical tools and methods. Actually if we see machine learning, 90% uh, of the uh, tools, they are statistical tools, you know. And I think I am listing many of them over here. Uh, why it was there? Because uh, data elicitation which requires pre-processing and uh, uh, feature extraction. These are the two activities so that the data is uh, fit for prediction purpose. They are in the form that is required for the um, in, for intelligent approach uh, for for uh, taking decisions for PHM, you know. So, um, we know that neural network <coughs> is the central figure in this. Uh, and then, you know, what in a neural network, what are the uh, uh, important features, especially the activation function, use of activation function uh, and then uh, different uh, layers. So one is input layer, hidden layer and output layer, number of hidden layers that are required. What we can read from the hidden layer? These are million dollar questions and uh, scientists they are trying to answer these things and uh, work is still going on. But one thing has come out very clearly. Uh, data should be filtered and pre-processed before it is being fed to. Uh, so that is a major pro problem that has been solved and that is how uh, we have from AI to machine learning and machine learning to deep learning. Um, deep learning all is a data analysis and where ANN is uh, used, you know. So then support vector machine. Uh, we have regression, regression is a core component uh, whether it is ANN or any uh, feature extraction, uh, gradient descent optimization. So regressions sometimes it is for optimization, sometimes uh, uh, to arrive at the solution uh, and to fine tune the parameters, uh, this kind of thing. Genetic algorithm is there, very interesting uh, component for optimization. Uh, and uh, why genetic al algorithm has entered because the simplex uh, method, uh, the, the linear uh, optimization method, uh, they might get trapped into local minima and this genetic alg algorithm and this kind of methods, they, they, they are based on random generation of sample um, and then whatever mutation, crossover and all those things. So we will we'll come to that actually. Then uh, one of the technique is called K nearest neighbor. KNN, you know. So distance, it is a, uh, in many of this uh, <coughs> feature extraction or pre-processing, uh, we have to categorize the components and this categorization comes from how uh, especially the distance is there between the next neighbor, next to next neighbor and how they form a group so that we have many groups. So th that is where the data scientists, they try to understand because now the data is uh, very complex, it comes in a very complex form in terms of size, in terms of uh, number of parameter interaction and from there extracting some features or information is very important. So uh, various techniques are used and one is the distance between uh, two data points. Uh, decision and random forest methods, probably in olden times uh, there is something called uh, 
breadth for search and depth for search. So it is something like decision, decision tree, random forest, those, uh, those techniques. They are not similar, but some, some philosophical elements are overlapping over there also. And reinforced learning, you know. Um, we know supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Uh, but then uh, there is a three, third method which is, which is called reinforced learning. That means we try to read the data and try to see uh, from which action or uh, you know we get maximum output. So there is a reward and punishment type of approach works. So that is there in this one. So uh, first is a, um, AI ML. So I would say this inspiration though the figure is not very good but it is symbolic you can take it you know. Um, uh, all our techniques, if you see prognostics, even AI, ML, they are basically inspired from human mind or brain especially. How we think, how we take decision and what, uh, in what way the interaction of neurons uh, and synopsis uh, connecting the neurons, uh, they, they come together and they um, form memory also, they form, uh, uh, you know, uh, rational behavior, what we call. Uh, uh, it comes from there and uh, many things, you know. So, scientists, they are trying to understand, uh, the better is the understanding and so artificial neural network, it was based, genesis is there in the how neuron, uh, neurons in the brain, they interact with each other and what are the activation level which are sitting right at each node so that you know, so we have concept of activation uh, thing also. So basically we are trying to mimic human behavior in AI. ML is uh, uh, dealing with the data, machine learning, uh, learning how we can learn, even AI also learns, but how we can learn in a better way and that requires uh, feature extraction, uh, memory and all that. So, uh, so and the advantage of this is human minds, uh, it responds to the situation uh, if, it, if it is a stressful situation, um, the, its capacity comes down. But if it is a normal situation, it is so. But then computers don't get affected. So here is the point: the computers can be very good advisors and, and for emergency action also. So that that we can draw maximum benefit because uh, they will be functioning in a way they were functioning in other situation, normal situation actually. Uh, so, uh, now, how AI and ML they are connected? One way is straightforward. Uh, ML is a subset of AI. Again, uh, DL is a subset of ML also. So that way one can read. Uh, but then what is, what is the challenge? The massive data. And that is why from AI to ML, ML to deep learning. These methods have come. I listed the in previous slide these methods. So now we will be having a uh, let me be uh, uh, very clear because uh, 25 minutes are not sufficient for so I have sort of gone to the introduction level and once you got introduced to the topic um, then we can take course um, you know, to learn further aspects and that I thought is the better strategy you know. So uh, and then the uh, scope, scope of this uh, uh, thing is there for all machine learning approaches. Uh, one is for PHM implementation and for with PHM implementation through uh, RUL estimation <coughs> and it is not only RUL estimation, it is basically identifying a very fast evolving scenario which I have not indicated here but then that I will be covering in the next module that is application of uh, risk based engineering where how transients are handled where human gets overwhelmed by the data which is coming to the control room and then finally he takes a call on this. So, uh, so um, it, since it is coming in a very natural and a systematic way, uh, you can go back and go back and forth and learn these uh, uh, things. Uh, but then yes, um, what, why we require pre-processing? I have been hinting upon that in all through. Um, uh, in any field, whether it is a risk assessment, are uh, uh, filtering the data. I would say 80% effort goes into that if you want to do a good job. Even if you are ma making a risk assessment model, 80% data goes into if we pick up the data from, uh, uh, from the, uh, the generic sources, then we are not doing a job for our plant. 
we are doing job for other plant where we picked up the data for but then if we want to do for our plant it, a lot of efforts are the same way if you want to implement phm it has to be my, uh, my plant's phm so data 80 percent data goes there and pre-processing involved first looking at the data in a general way and then probably uh, there are many components which form like it could be categorization it could be prioritization it could be attaching some uh, system specific uh, incentive or something you know uh, for taking decisions you know finally it is required for decision making so uh, pre-processing involves what you want to see at the output level from the ann uh, and for that uh, we have to do a simple example i have got the data for each data range is different so if i do normalization that is a good idea uh, but then uh, here the point is uh, always when we do data analysis the domain expert should be involved because they have a good feel of what happens when and how it is handled and why some things are more important than other things and why priority should be given so uh, the pre processing post processing uh, you know feature extraction uh, simple uh, take the case of uh, um, bearing monitoring expert comes and tells uh, the, okay, uh, you can operate the pump for uh, two days or one day. Now, this is a domain expert. If domain expert is not involved, the feature extraction will not be proper. So, that kind of thing. And then finally, our model is ready. We have done the recall test. Now, what is the cover of the uh, coverage of recall test for missing inputs or for that, you know, even fuzzy inputs uh, that we have? Uh, there are so many scenarios. Uh, so, uh, coverage of the recall test is also very important and then uh, what kind of data processing tools that we use and we are available to us that should be benchmarked and uh, you know uh, special attention should be paid, paid uh, to the outliers. If we are not able to eliminate outliers or mask the outliers then our data may not be doing its purpose. So, and then feature extraction. Feature extraction, this is a point I would say where an expert in that area or domain experts, they should be just reading the graph and this thing, they, they are not sufficient. One has to have a feel of it for different machine, the signatures are different and then we cannot generalize it that, that we did uh, this job on other machines. So, we here also know that doesn't work. Um, bearing to bearing, it changes, ruler bearing, ball bearing and all that. So, there are all uh, core, um, core disciplinary subjects. Uh, the person who is working on data, uh, data uh, is a data analytics. He should be aware of these kind of issues. Now, wh what the toolbox contains? Okay. So first is that a general discussion on artificial neural network. Then uh, the nature of training could be supervised or unsupervised. So there are two things. Then we have a regression. Regression, ANN can be used for regression and there are so many regression techniques but regression is a part and parcel of our statistical approach which is applied in machine learning. And then we have genetic algorithm which operates on uh, you know our principle of reproduction and things like that and then support vector machine, I have given abbreviation here but later on you can find in uh, uh, slides, uh, they are uh, they are being expelled. Uh, then uh, gradient descent method in short. Uh, the decision tree, KNN, random forest and reinforced learning. These are the modules, that I think the form 11 modules that are the 11 techniques are algorithm. It is better to call them algorithm because they are in mostly in soft form or statistical form. Okay, so neural network, as I told you, it is inspired from the uh, what is happening at the level of brain. You know, all the neurons are there connected and these interconnections are there for us to see and we translated them into a mathematical algor algorithm which we call artificial neural network and typically just to explain what is artificial neural network, I have taken a three layer neural network uh, wherein the system inputs are x1, x2, x3, it can go up to xn, then uh, this is input layer and these are the neurons, neurons uh, which are doing processing are using an activation function to translate the input into weight and finally at various level input into out output and all and finally producing output. So the, the information processing occurs at the input layer, hidden layer and at the output layer. Okay? So uh, th that we have over here. And then 
uh, we have many things uh, as I said activation function we will be seeing in detail what is happening information processing from this end to this end and finally if the recall test and output if you want to learn your feedback comes here okay that also we will see in a few slides um, then training uh, how training is performed uh, the whole thing is simulated uh, there is a technique called uh, feed forward back propagation technique that means we learn in uh, iterative mode uh, inputs are processed from input to output again goes to output see the correction or error again it comes back to and weights are modified and this way the learning occurs and then learning and that weights form the memory actually and then supervised learning supervised learning means we have data, data and input and we know the pattern what what results will be there so we train the neural network for given set of uh, this vector what is the output if they change the parameter in this vector what will be the output so that means it is called supervised learning there is output available for seeing how we want the output and the neural network is trained on this output so um, okay so here the activation function that we choose which is playing out at the level of the node uh, you know uh, is very important function so there are some um, uh, important activation function that I have brought it here. Some of them are very simple, some of them are uh, little complicated, uh, but then yes, nowadays at least there is a good state of the art available in getting the, or you know, even choosing an uh, uh, step function, uh, activation function. So this is a step function, you can see it is a step, uh, the fx is the, uh, you know, output that we, uh, we have for x and then we have this 0 to, it, will, it is binary type of thing. It will choose if x is more than 0, uh, it's 1 and otherwise 0. It is very simple and elegant function. Uh, then sine function, it has got here minus and plus 1, it varies. Uh, if fx is equal to 1, uh, if x is more than 0, okay, and if x is uh, otherwise, if it is not more than 0, then it uh, minus 1. So that's why we have here uh, sign activation function. Some these comments are applicable for here also uh, in my binary outputs prediction, you know, and uh, th that's how. But then there are function like identity function, f(x) is equal to x, and here we have this linear function, uh, um, and uh, this particular function uh, linear activation. Uh, it occurs like unlike sigmoid and uh, this thing hyper tangent or relu it has got a very linear uh, linear uh, variation uh, then we have sigmoid very popular function it was very popular till 10 years 15 years ago but now the superior things have come over here so sigmoid means function fx is equal to 1 upon 1 plus e raised to power minus x and this fx comes from here this line and uh, this being sort of a non-linear function, the function as it becomes more and more non-linear, its uh, applicability also uh, has increases. Like you can see, hypertension function. Uh, this is it is very useful. But then the ReLU, the latest activation function that has come in the uh, academic circle, it is uh, very useful. And they, this has got a, uh, you know, this you can see the black is indicate the uh, referred as uh, rectified linear unit. Rectified linear, RE stands for rectified linear unit. So uh, this is one and very preferred function now, nowadays. And here we have fx is equal to 0, 1 if x is less than 0 or if a, a, 1 if a, x is more than 0 we have this one and these are the further uh, transformation functions over here but then for us it is very important to understand what are the activation functions available and what we should do uh, with them and for given a problem definition you know so okay so first we will talk about the unsupervised learning that is sub, uh, support vector machine support vector machine basically you have a data set and then we have to understand the data and if I put a line uh, somewhere, how this uh, optimum this line is to divide into two segments. So we know y is equal to mx plus c. So similarly, we have a uh, equation of the line uh, for 0, minus 1, plus 1. 
So we can see here from the data set we are able to a huge data set we are able to uh, separate out two sets but things are not that simple in the life uh, for parameter x1 and x2 uh, there are complicated uh, uh, strategies are required to understand the data and then uh, what should be the threshold for them to accept into one group or other group that also are explained by the line uh, over here and this is how the support vectors uh, after an uh, support, support vector machine is one of the tools is unsupervised learning uh, extensively used uh, in the field. So we have support vector and then comes is regression. This is one of the statistical approach uh, which has found wider application in machine learning because uh, again here also uh, the objective is to understand the data and you know uh, the here I have given an example of class 4 power failure data and uh, how we should understand basically um, we, we have data and how it is uh, in agreement or disagreement uh, one way of reading it is like this how well the line is uh, line is uh, representing this data okay so here uh, in, in this uh, approach we have taken a viable graph a viable graph one line has been drawn uh, just by judgment and we see that whether it is it is a, uh, it is um, it is uh, following which distribution because bible can give answer for any distribution uh, whether it is exponential log normal normal and all that so one line we have and we felt that this line line is representing this data okay uh, now um, uh, a regression analysis have to be done that how well this line is representing this data so that regression analysis uh, the coefficient of correlation will give that answer but before that uh, the advantage with the viable distribution is uh, we have uh, you know uh, beta factor is equal to 1 then it is exponential distribution so uh, if we uh, see the gradient of this line and if we get something around 1 or so that means it is sort of following in a exponential distribution it is confirmed and then the coefficient of correlation if it is more than 0.9 then it is the line which we have drawn it is representing the data in a reasonable manner any value beyond 9, 0.9 is, uh, is, uh, uh, indic is an indication that this particular line is uh, representing our data okay so this is where the regression analysis uh, is very useful now next is we'll see gradient descent method it is basically optimization method uh, because in uh, learning the optimization plays a very important role and the uh, during uh, optimization or convergence the algorithm should not get trapped into local minima these are the two things so that means our training function should be such that it is not uh, steps are not too small at the same time it is not too high also so this is an algorithm uh, probably one can understand uh, you know uh, that we have this function x1 x2 xn then we have got a partial derivative for this function which is routine and then we have some i took a small equation x1 and uh, x1 square x1 x2 3x just to demonstrate the procedure and then by by partial differentiation we get 2x1 plus uh, x2 comma x1 plus 6x square and this is what the equation uh, optimized equation we have over here and then for implementation require choose the starting point blah, uh, uh, determine the descent of uh, this thing and then uh, whether it is at maximum or minimum we will come to know if we draw a transient and its gradient is 0 and uh, that is how we will get the delta function. Uh, uh, so uh, we have shown the example of two learning system uh, if the steps are too small it will take too much time to learn actually. So it is consuming unnecessary resources. Uh, so here for taking for, uh, for time taken for coming to the minima is uh, uh, too much actually. But if we uh, learn too fast then probably the biggest problem that means it gets trapped into local minima from here it will from here it will go to here from here it will go to here and it will keep moving on this side uh, in between this uh, cavity only or uh, so uh, we have the what i uh, what we are trying to say is that we optimization 
uh, while doing the optimization, our step size should be very, very uh, just uh, for making, uh, for training the um, machine learning process. So this is a gradient descent method. There is a genetic algorithm, the three principles of, uh, uh, you know, uh, selection, uh, selection, crossover and mutation. These form the core uh, for genetic algorithm. The first, you have to start the algorithm and initialize the population. So random values are given to the population. Why it is done? Because if the optimization starts and if locally some minima is come and the algorithm stops, then we are not, we not got the true global minima value. So uh, we randomize the uh, population space such that the minima anywhere randomly initialized and we can get this uh, true minima value at global level. So that, that is where genetic, genetic algorithm has found a wider application compared to the traditional, uh, you know, uh, linear optimization method or even non-linear optimization method. Uh, this method is being used extensively and here the uh, it is again inspired from the biology that is selection we have a strategy crossover and last once we crossover is done uh, between two uh, genomes then we have the mutation and then if the criteria is met the solution space we have over here otherwise if we don't get the criteria some criteria is set in terms of uh, you know uh, defining a criteria is itself is an art actually. So this uh, thing is deal and I used one of my paper where we have used this uh, technique for surveillance test, test interval optimization. Again, you can say uh, uh, prognostics and health management, management part more and you know, so um, then it is a nearest neighbor. Uh, it is very simple and elegant method and I think it is being used a lot. Uh, you choose the target point, measure the distance around that and try to characterize k value will determine how many can be there in the uh, group actually. So here three groups uh, uh, you can see here and the distance is measured, we, we know that x and x, x i j and uh, uh, these are the coordinates they are giving distance and this is a basically uh, um, final, uh, finally having a, a square root of uh, uh, what kind of uh, distances that we are getting over here. This is also I took from some uh, website. I found it is very interesting and very elegant for and, uh, for explaining the care near, nearest neighbor. So, and then we have the decision tree. Decision tree is something like you know we have fault tree wherein uh, if and then rule operates and then child nodes and then leaf nodes over here. But sitting inside this is a random forest approach. Uh, so even though random forest is and uh, decision tree is inter uh, independent approach, but random uh, uh, random uh, selection and the, this thing, um, I think it is similar to what we ha had in uh, depth for search and bet for search strategy, wherein uh, the analyst will choose whether you want to go to the uh, breadth or depth. So the complete algorithm will operate up to the depth, then it will go to the next node. So uh, lot, a lot of if and then rules are there over here to operate this uh, decision tree and for random forest. So uh, now next is uh, reinforced learning. This is one of the um, approach uh, which is used when we are, we, we don't, uh, rather we don't have option for um, supervised or unsupervised learning. And that means we have uh, our own knowledge base. We have a lot of data uh, or we have data or we can, uh, while training itself, we can form, generate our data. So that is where this approach is used. So that means we want very specific solutions over here. Um, so first, uh, first is whatever you have data, uh, past data from the plant uh, experience, then you choose reward and penalties. This approach, uh, a decision is taken and whether it is, uh, whether, whether it is appropriate or not, a reward point is given or penalties are put on that. And reward and penalties, they will give the direction uh, for the action part component actually. So the algorithm operates in three major steps. First step is um, uh, action of the agent in the present towards status reflected from the environment. So what is the environment? Environment uh, evaluates the action and provides a feedback in the form of reward. 
and then the rewards sign reflects the performance of the uh, reach, uh, for the reaching the goal and here there are two approaches one is model based that means when we have the data uh, we use model based approach but we, we don't have a data and we want to generate the data and from there only we want to learn so this is called model based approach one of the approach is uh, marco decision uh, probably one of the popular approach in this reinforced learning so and there are many i think set of 5 6 uh, very uh, popular approaches are there you can refer uh, in various literature and uh, um, i found it very interesting because it has got both the capabilities it can handle the uh, our own data at the same time it can uh, generate the data on its own based on the reward and penalties principle and give and then uh, and that means uh, it has got its own brain at the same time it can learn from the data also so this is a very uh, good approach then now we have in this approach we have seen the toolbox i would say toolbox of ai and ml then we have seen how data is processed uh, uh, focus towards learning uh, feature extraction and then uh, And, uh, we have also understood the difference between machine learning deep learning and all the next topic also will be um, ai ml and decision learning but it will be more of demonstrating the approach and bringing out more features of ai and uh, ai and ml actually thank you very much